What's going on, everybody? Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk about one of the biggest questions I've been asked in 2022. Where and how do I sell my sports cards? Now, th this is a very broad, broad topic out there because there's so many ways you could sell them, whether it's through any of the social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be out there, Twitter, to eBay, my slabs, PWCC, uh, all the different auction houses out there, all the people who made websites out there to forum places as you can get into. It's immense. And I can understand that if you're trying to sell, you should probably, you know, limit yourself down to maybe so many things or try to find out what works for you, what doesn't. Maybe something works for a little bit, then you have to bounce back and forth. You rotate things around. It's a headache. It's a pure headache. I mean, do I need to build my own website? If so, how do I get traffic to it? There's all kinds of questions. So we're going to go over some of this stuff today. And I just did something real quick on here. Buy, sell sports cards on YouTube. You know, I'm going to pull my thing down here. ECB, I think that's it. Okay. Just so you guys can see. And yes, I do use vidIQ. It's not a sponsor or nothing like that. It just tells me, you know, different tags people are using. So when I'm doing my videos to reach more people, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But anyhow, not sponsorship by them, but I know you guys see it. Somebody will ask me if I use it. I do. I use that in TubeBuddy or Tube something. Or I think it's called TubeBuddy. So I just did this. This is the last month. Check this out. BuySportsCards.com. I sell sports cards online easier. Never heard of them. Never heard of the site. No idea. And you're going to see many, many out there. Maybe this is a great platform that I just never known about. And, you know, a bunch of older people use it kind of like sports slots where guys go on there for their base cards for sets. I don't know. I listened to this for a little bit. How to sell your sports cards fast for top dollar. We're going to come back to this here in a little bit. The realities of selling sports cards or whatnot. Definitely a separate video coming out this week, so be prepared for that one. That's just a different animal in its, in its own self. And we're going to talk about both buying and selling or whatnot. All right. A guy saying why I'm a sports card flipper. Uh, sports card yard sale fine. So you got yard sales that people are finding stuff at. Com C is the best buying and selling platform. Forgot about Com C. That's why I said there's so many out there. But you have to look at it. You want to talk to people. And you try not to find people that are all just successful on one platform. You want to find out from other people, you know, hey, why weren't you successful on this? What was the catch on to it? For me, I've heard many, many stories on to it. I know guys that have been successful and guys who weren't. I think it comes down to the amount of work and effort you put into this. Along with inventory, don't get me wrong, you've got to have a lot of inventory for Com C. I know guys who buy the, I don't know what they're called now. It's like if I had a whole like uh, account, I could buy it and then Com C transfers it over to me. And then I have to go back through and redo it all. It's insane. Completely insane stuff. But Com C been around for a long time frame and... I guess you could send stuff through them for auction on eBay now. Like I said, I'm not really, I haven't been up to date and they've probably been doing it for a long time. Just happened to notice it uh, here recently. All right. Card shows, another avenue you could sell at. And these guys here that are doing these videos, I'm just saying, I just went on here to look, and it's just that many people giving advice on what they're successful on to. And what they're trying to say, hey, this is what I do to make my money onto this stuff. I thought there was one more onto it. Ooh, it might have popped off eBay best onto it. Okay, you guys get to catch on this. So, from my experience, just by looking at this stuff, I don't think any of these guys don't mind if I have their stuff on the screen promoting the video or whatever. So, there's so many avenues. And what I like to do is this. I look at my stuff versus raw and graded. Graded stuff, probably your best platform that if you could sell it on, is my slabs. The downfall is on my slabs, as soon as you post it, it trickles down, down, goes further and further. And you have to really keep up to date in your prices because if something shifts, somebody's on there searching for it, I'm telling you. Um, 
I see different different areas always selling on her. Sometimes a lot of the high end will sell on to it. Now I believe it's if it's over five thousand dollars, it's got to be vaulted for the transaction through uh, another agency. I forget the name of it offhand, which is smart because now it makes both buyer and seller, you know, with a transaction feel a little bit safer because there's a middle ground onto it. Basically, you go to buy, you pay for it. It's it's set off to a middleman. Middleman receives it, says, yes, this is it, releases funds type deal, I guess, or something, and it moves on. I don't know, I haven't, but when I sold my last ones over five grand on my slabs, it was just, you know, the honor system went to PayPal, and I mailed it out, insured the crap out of it, and had to usually go UPS because of the amount of insurance. Uh, just hitting this up, another one, people are going to talk about what not as being an avenue. I think whatnot is more your buy avenue than a sell avenue because selling on there, unless you really got cards at dirt cheap prices, and I'm talking about you went out and bought a fifty thousand dollar collection for twenty thousand, and you don't care, you just want to make ten, fifteen grand on it. Whatnot might be the way to do it to move all that stuff quickly instead of sitting there and doing all the listings on eBay and decide where it all goes. It might be. But normally what will happen is, is guys will go on there and a lot of people reference eBay comps and they'll want to buy at 60, 70 percent eBay comps. It doesn't make sense to sell a 60, 70 percent eBay comps, lose the same almost percentage uh, that you will on eBay to whatnot to where you're really getting 50 to 60 percent of your card. Why not just sell it on to uh, uh, eBay instead? A lot of things floating around my mind. I'm talking. I don't want to hit whatnot too much. It's a separate video coming out. But it is an avenue. I think it's a great platform to buy and then to even possibly resell on eBay with. Huh. I thought I wasn't recording for a minute. It was a live thing I didn't click on. Huh. All righty, all righty. Um, selling wise, you got card shows. To set up at a card show, you're gonna have to be very patient nowadays. It's one of those same things. People are gonna haggle with you out there nonstop. They're gonna be like, "Well, I'm paying cash. It don't matter. Cash. There's still sales tax. The dealer is supposed to pay, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. What others do with their tax stuff is not on me, but legally, you're supposed to pay your sales taxes on to it. I think card shows right now are a lot of good buys because people are trying to move out of stuff. I don't think prices have bought them out yet. I mean, look at Michael Jordan stuff. Look at Tom Brady stuff. Really taking some big hits right now across the board. And you're talking about the goats of both sports right there. Uh, I think with card shows, though, you could sell. You know, if you, if you somebody wants it bad enough and you got those rare cards, you probably could drop it maybe 10%, take your cash, and you're still... Maybe comfortably making it onto it, but it's going to be harder at shows to make those big long days where you're selling out unless you're willing to take big, huge losses. And that's when other people are buying because they don't mind to put the time, work, and effort into selling that to make that profit. So, again, I think shows, yeah, they're okay to sell at right now. Uh, if you got the rarer stuff, you can, you know, barter away. Eventually, somebody's probably going to give in to you. Versus, you know, buying at card shows, and you can find some good deals. And people, especially at the end of shows, they're hurting. They'll they'll go down on price. I'm telling you now, they'll go down on price. Or they, if they've had three or four shows, you still see the same cards in there, and you're going on three or four months with them. Yeah, they're definitely going to move it eventually at a lower price. Some of the other avenues that I look at is I've heard Instagram is really good on to it. And we're going to hit this guy's video right here. Yo, what is going on, you guys? So today, I'm bringing guys a brand new sports cards video. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down how I go about selling my cards, um, how I can get top dollar and sell them very, very fast. I've got a lot of DMs on Instagram about this. So in today's video, I'm going to be tackling this question. But before we get into that, I did want to say I've got a whole stack of Darius Garland Prism PSA 10. Okay, we're going to skip forward this. I'd never heard of this guy before, Sports Card Invest. Some of you guys might. I don't watch a whole lot of YouTube, and if I am, it's people that I've known for a while in a hobby and stuff. Let me see if I get to... He's on my slabs. 
Um, now, I personally list all of my slabs up on my slabs because you don't have to send in the slab beforehand. All you have to do is to scan the front and the back of this slab, um, and you can go ahead and post it up. It's an extra it's a good idea, and I think people to see your slabs. Let me the greatest stop thing this. is when it sells. Um, I think my slabs is a great opportunity. I don't want to talk over somebody, even though it's a video. I think that's still kind of weird, and you're hearing two voices and missing stuff. So I think my slabs is a good spot to go into. Uh, I do, I think usually when I put my stuff up there, it's usually for a couple days, and then I pop it off. If it didn't sell right off the bat, now some things I will say I've left on them before in a month, and then all of a sudden, like a month goes by, and I'll sell like ten items on there within that week, and I'm like, what is going on? No idea. But I think if you don't get that initial sell that first day or two, it gets lost in the feed till somebody's willing to do a search, find what they're looking for, find your item, and then buy it. I think, though, like I said, it, it's a good opportunity for you to sell slabs onto. They do raw now as well. Um, I haven't really ventured into raw onto it. I use my raw cards with either DC Sports or my own eBay account or shows. I wish he would have this to where I could go to where Without I Without further ado, we're going to hop right into our next up, and that is going to be Instagram, and I strongly recommend this for everyone. Now, I want you guys, I'm sorry for stopping this right here to listen to this Instagram thing because I didn't know there were like group pages for stuff on Instagram. I had no idea. It shows how I am not with it when it comes to social media at all. Heck, I'm still trying to figure out the Discord thing. By the way, Discord links in the um, description in case anybody wants to join. That's my cheap plug of the day. One, I know everybody comes at me. I don't have a following on Instagram. Um, you know, how am I going to find people to sell to? Um, the simplest way possible without a following is to go ahead and search the word sports cards on Instagram. Follow every single account you can. Um, even if you have to set up a new account to do this so you don't you know, mess up your personal account, I totally understand that. Um, so set up a new account, follow every single sports card page on Instagram. Um, you're going to see a bunch of people buying and selling if you just go to your story tab. Um, you're going to see people you know, making buying posts, um, you know, on the, st on people's stories. Um, they often say looking for, for example, Darius Garland, Prism rookie cards, DM me if you have any, or what you can simply do is cold, you know, message a lot of sports card accounts. Um, now you can go through sports card accounts and see what they like, see what they're buying, see what they're posting. Um, and essentially what I personally do is I've personally built a network on Instagram where I know if I have a Darius Garland card, who to go ahead and message up for. Um, if I have a Kevin Durant card, I know buyers who will buy Kevin Durant cards. Um, and it just simplifies your process so easily when you're trying to sell cards. Before posting it anywhere, all you have to do is message the people you know might be interested. And who knows, maybe they will take it. Um, so one, you build a lot of relationships. But two, it's a good way to just reach people who want the cards. And the best thing is, you know, you can save on fees if you're able to make transactions directly with people of course you do want to play it safe you likely want to use paypal goods and services if you're purchasing cards on instagram just so that you have seller or buyer protection um but oftentimes a lot of the card accounts you're dealing with they have vouchers um it's pretty easy to figure out if they're legit or not um so it's a pretty simple way to save a lot on fees um now hand in hand is facebook groups um i definitely recommend every okay instagram I had no idea you could do half that stuff onto it. That's why I wanted to play this piece onto it for everybody. It makes sense because you hear a lot of people always doing deals on Instagram. Uh, I've done a few deals myself on Instagram and to make people feel safe that I had no idea who they were. But, you know, they might have heard of me through so-and-so and whatever. I will PayPal invoice them that card. That way they can pay it. They have an actual receipt for it. I have a receipt for it, and they're going to get tracking on to it. Uh, I've heard bad stories. I've heard good stories. You know, just like anywhere you go out there, you're going to hear both of them about Instagram. If any of you guys do this stuff on Instagram, I'm kind of curious. Put down in the comments section what you exactly do on to it, because it's a lot to do with social media, and I hear it's working for, you know, a good chunk of people out there. It's just I'm not that technical with all this newer stuff i mean 45 years old and yeah i just gave my age out 45 old man but you know if i'm like that how many other older people that are holding some really cool stuff out there or nice stuff that i might want to buy or you maybe you want to buy 
can't get on to that stuff. You know, we're still back in the days where we understand eBay, how to post on forums, and go to card shows. That's about it, you know. But he makes a good point on this. He makes it's the same point with Facebook groups as well, too. But I think with Facebook groups, from what I've seen, there's too many scams that go on out there with scamish stuff. You got to find those real tight groups out there. And the sad part is a lot of those tight groups have become, um, I guess you could say, defunct. They're they're no longer existence. The group's still there, but, you know, it's done. And there's very few groups out there that, you know, I would say, hey, this is good to go because these guys have been doing it for a long time frame. They got a lot of money dumped in. Not saying you can't turn bad down the road, but, you know, the likeliness of it happening is very, very low on to it. But there's many different avenues. People, like I said, I want to go through some of this stuff because people have always asked me this question, you know, well, where should I go sell this card at? Not every method out there is going to work for every person. What works for me might not work for you. You're going to have to experiment and see where your, your I guess you could say your niche is or your strong area versus your weak areas. Maybe you're really good with getting views on eBay because of just the way that they have their algorithm versus selling on YouTube or going on whatnot, which I think you need to at least have about 75 people in there that's going to be bidding on your stuff to even come out relatively, you know, I'm going to say in the green on to it. Uh, man, it's just so crazy when you start thinking about this stuff. Then you have your social media platforms, you have card shows, you have all these websites people have had up, like Sports Lots, Tom C, oh man, all these vaults that now let you do stuff, to all these other websites that have popped up trying to capitalize onto the sports card uh, hobby itself, or as a lot of guys like to say, the sports card market. But... This is just some options for people that always ask me this stuff, and it's really hard to give a, po a straight answer like, hey, do this, it's going to work. you got to put in, like, anything you do, just like if you were planning on finding a wife or a husband one day and you want to have kids, you got to put in a time, effort, and work onto that stuff. And you just, you're not going to walk into one place and just take it over. Especially if you're a solo person doing it. If you're a group of like six to eight guys, you form some business, everybody's going to have their own thing out there. You, you can brand yourselves that way. But as a sole proprietor, meaning that you're the single person doing it, you're going to have to find what's good, how much time you can use into doing that stuff. And I understand everybody wants to maximize on that dollar out there. I mean, it's just the given nature we're in. But some time frames, it's time to take a loss, too, and move on to something else. You have, like I said, many different things onto it. You could search this stuff. You could search on Google how to sell your sports cards, where to sell your sports cards. You're going to get so much information. You'll be like, oh, my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. So for me, it's simple. It's my slabs, eBay. eBay is also slash DC Sports because if I can't get rid of it, I'll send it to him because he has higher um views on his stuff and he has to start off his auctions for me at the same time frame i still do card shows i use the, my own website now, I, I would not tell anybody to go out and build their own website it's expensive to maintain uh i think i spend something like 50 bucks a month on mine and i very rarely sell on it this year if you guys just seen i just posted a few cards this year and it went but i barely rarely sell on it anymore which i need to change next year and we're going to end up doing that on to it. It's just going to be some flash things, five cards, ten cards here or there, go out, let everybody have a chance at them. And if they sit for a couple days, we'll pull, send off somewhere else on to it. But I would never advise anybody to build a website now, unless you have a big following to where people are going to actually pump the traffic through to make your conversion rates on sales. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Facebook groups, if you get into good ones, but you got to do your own due diligence on that stuff. Is it good or not? Just because my friend Billy Bob and Johnny T over there say it's good, it might not be good. It might be good for them. They've never seen any issues. And as soon as I get in there, boom, issue one, issue two. Oh, poor shipping, you know. But there's many different platforms out there, guys. You just got to see what you're really good at doing. 
where you could focus your time and energy into to make it successful and not get discouraged onto it. If you're just looking for quick sales, you can find anybody to sell to. That, that's the easiest thing I could say. If you're willing to dump it at some kind of low cost onto where people can make money, you're always going to have buyers. But if you're trying to hit, you know, to squeeze out that very last dollar or try to get, to, you know, close to that eBay comp, why not just sell it on eBay and just lose the fees, you know, onto it. All right, guys, I know a little bit longer video. I keep on getting these questions, where to sell, where to buy and all that. And it, there's really no correct answer onto it. There's just so many areas out there. There's well-proven track records, and with those well-proven track records, there's always those horror stories, too. It's all a gamble out there onto it. All right, guys, feel free to like this video. Subscribe as well, too, if you're not already subscribed. And don't forget, it's all going to be how much effort you put into something, what you're going to get out of it in the long run. There's many, like I said, different places, different people use different things. At least you'll be able to make some connections out there, and if you you know, you don't do well in one area, don't get frustrated. Move to something else. Because eventually you might try four or five things and realize, oh man, I know what I was doing wrong in my original one. This is what I need to do here. It may end up working for you. But other than that, guys, take care. Have a good one. Catch you guys next video. I'm out.